Have you ever heard of Malcolm X? Yes. Have you ever heard of uh, Martin Luther King? Yes. Rosa Parks? Yes. Have you ever heard of Pauli Murray? Pauli Murray? I go to Hunter College. Um, I've never heard of Pauli Murray. She's not really mentioned at all. They don't really focus on her at all or give any attention. She was named Woman of the Year by the National Council of Negro Women and Mademoiselle Magazine in 1946 and 1947, respectively. Pauli Murray was a nationally known lawyer, a writer, a poet, a human rights activist, an Episcopal priest, Reverend Dr. Pauli Murray. Pauli Murray's life did not start out as great as it had ended, and neither did her ancestors. Pauli Murray's great-grandmother Harriet was a slave in North Carolina. She was repeatedly raped by Sidney Smith, the son of her slave owner, James Smith. Eventually, she became pregnant and gave birth to her daughter, Cornelia. Sidney's brother Francis was disgusted with Sidney's actions toward Harriet and fought and won for the ownership of Cornelia. Francis and their sister Mary Ruffin Smith raised her. Cornelia later in life married Robert Fitzgerald. The Fitzgerald family had a house that was a safe haven for runaway slaves. Mary Ruffin Smith later in life leaves Cornelia a small inheritance, which Robert uses to build the house that Polly Murray will later grow up in. Polly Murray was born on November 20th, 1910 in Baltimore, Maryland, where she was raised by her mother, Agnes Georgina Fitzgerald Murray, and her father, William H. Murray. Her father was a school teacher while her mother was a nurse. He was a teacher in the Baltimore City schools, public schools, um, and um, he was also a principal. She was one of the first one of the early graduates of Hampton School of Nurses, or Hampton Training School for Nurses. She was, she graduated in the class of 1902. Polly tragically lost both of her parents by the time she was 12 years old. My mother died uh, suddenly with uh, a cerebral hemorrhage. There were six of us, four girls and two boys. The oldest girl was about nine when my mother died, and the baby was about six months. The ages were spaced, so the three of us were really babies. I was three, my, my younger sister was about 20 months, my baby brother was about six months. And something had to be decided about the three babies of the family. The three older children stayed with my father, and so uh, my mother's oldest sister, Pauline, was both my namesake and my godmother. And she had kept me for periods of time before my mother's death. Polly's father suffered from long-term effects of typhoid fever and eventually was confined to Crownsville State Hospital where he was murdered by a guard in 1923. Polly went on to live with her aunt, Pauline Fitzgerald, an elementary school teacher, and her grandparents, Robert and Cornelia Fitzgerald in Durham, North Carolina. Pauline was a school teacher and taught Polly Murray a number of life's lessons that all black women must learn. This lesson is that racism exists. Beaten to death by one of the guards at the institution, William H. Murray, 30 years old, colored, a patient at the State Hospital for the Colored Insane at Crownsville, Maryland, was found dead in his cellar. Oh, I grew up in grandfather's house, grandfather Fitzgerald's house. I was a very small child, growing up with four to five very settled adults. Aunt Pauline was a public school teacher, taught anywhere from first through fourth grade, and um, real disciplinarian, but great sensitivity to children. And uh, I don't recall ever being suppressed in terms of, shut up, don't you speak, children should be seen and not heard or anything of the sort. I, I uh, was allowed, I think, full ex expression, self-expression, coupled with work discipline. Aunt Pauline experienced her own tragic loss in her life. Aunt Pauline lost her daughter only a week after giving birth and lost her son only nine months after entering motherhood. 
Polly's childhood was drastically different from that of most children. Growing up with five adults greatly impacted the way in which she acted as well as her self-motivation. Spending such a large amount of time with adults drove Polly to have an older mindset. It was also the foundation for her self-determination, confidence, and her overall drive to leave an impact in history. Why don't you know me? Have they not taught you about what I've done? Sang along with the psalms that I have sung? Have my battles for black women's rights, all women's rights and equal rights really gone unnoticed? I am an revolutionary woman and my voice shall be heard. My legacy shall be seen on top of the highest mountains. I am a daughter, a lawyer, a civil activist, an aunt and a priest. I am Polly Murray, that's me. I'd like to share some of my personal experiences about the Reverend Mary. So I'm going to refer to her as Aunt Polly because she was my great aunt. I would like to tell you who she was when she was in my life and at the end of her life. These are my own personal lessons of love. I spent time with her, with her when I was in my teens and my 20s. My mother and I would visit her in Boston and during family functions, I was always reluctant and somewhat afraid of her because she always challenged me to be all that I could be. Well, at 20, I really didn't want to hear that. You know, I wanted to get to the next concert, the next party, the next, the next social function, the next club. So, our meetings became few and far between. Our party's life shifted after her life partner died. She decided to go to seminary school. This is where she came to terms with who she was and with God. 